Hello, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'm very glad that you were here. Today we are here to do my September TBR. I'm really hoping that September is going to be a lot more chill of a month for my TBR. Between doing my Slayer Fest readathon for three months and then doing the amazing readathon and the magical readathon this month, there has been a lot that has dictated what I can or cannot read. Now, every month there is some level of this because, of course, I'm doing my challenge pulls as well as my TBR game, but I feel like my reading has been a lot more restricted in the past few months. And so I'm hoping that September is going to be a little bit more flexible overall. Now, of course, before we we can go ahead and get into the challenge pulls and gameplay. We do need to recap how I did in the month of August. Now, because of the readathons that I was participating in, some of the books that I originally chose to satisfy some of my TBR game prompts have been switched around, but I did actually satisfy all of the prompts. So as I'm going through what I read, I will also make note of what readathon challenge prompts they satisfied as well. So in terms of challenge pull, the very first challenge that I pulled was 12 Sharp, which was the next book that I needed to read in the Stephanie Plum series by Janet Ivanovich. I did successfully read that story. I also ended up even reading the 13th book as well. So we definitely satisfied that prompt. The next challenge pull was to read the next book in the Tracy Crosswhite Detective series that I'm currently in the middle of. I did read book five in that series. And at this point, I do not know whether I will be continuing in that series. So we're going to see, but I did satisfy that reading prompt. And then for challenge number three, I pulled Secrets of a Charmed Life by Susan Meisner. And I actually ended up reading My Dear Hamilton instead for this challenge pull. And that was for two reasons. Reasons. I ultimately ended up needing to read My Dear Hamilton to satisfy a readathon challenge prompt. And also, the only reason why I had Secrets of a Charmed Life in the cup at all was because it was going to satisfy a buzzword reading challenge. And I've ultimately decided to swap books with something else. So I didn't actually need to read Secrets of a Charmed Life to satisfy a reading challenge. And so, since I ended up selecting My Dear Hamilton to satisfy a readathon challenge prompt, and I knew it was going to satisfy some other challenge prompts as well, I went ahead and read that instead. Anyway, moving on into the gameplay prompts, the first draw landed me on the prompt to read a favorite booktuber recommendation. For that, I selected You Were There Too by Colleen Oakley, which I did read and very much enjoy. I also used that to satisfy the very first prompt for the amazing readathon to read a book from one of the big five publishers. So that ended up doubling up on challenge prompts for me. Then the next prompt I landed on was to read a book set in a foreign country. Originally, I was tentatively planning on reading Secrets of a Charmed Life, but again, I knew that could potentially change. I ended up reading The Five by Hallie Rubenhold to satisfy this prompt. I picked up The Five in August because for one of the magical readathon prompts, I had to do a pet pick. And so I selected several books and I laid them out and I put pieces of kibble on them and I had my cat choose what I read. And so the five was the book that they ended up choosing for me to read. That satisfied a magical readathon prompt and it also was set in a foreign country to me. I went ahead and used that to satisfy the foreign country prompt. Then the next prompt was to read one of my most recent purchases at the time that was Dark Corners by Megan Golden, which I did read. Then I landed on the prompt to read a book with red on the cover. And for that, I originally selected the violin Lynn Conspiracy, but My Dear Hamilton actually has red on the cover, so I used that to satisfy that prompt. That actually satisfied the amazing readathon challenge of reading a book with three or more people on the cover. It was surprisingly difficult to satisfy that prompt, and My Dear Hamilton was one of the only books I was able to find that satisfied that prompt. It was a chunker, y'all, that was almost a 700 page historical fiction, and I loved it to death, but that was definitely a challenge to get through for the readathon, and I wanted to go ahead and give myself a little bit of grace, and so I also used it to satisfy that TBR game prompt as well. And then the final TBR game prompt was to read the shortest book on my TBR and that was Signal Fires by Danny Shapiro, which I did read. I also used that to satisfy the amazing readathon prompt of reading a book with a pretty cover as well as a magical readathon prompt to start a book before bed. So that worked out perfectly for that. All right, now that that's out of the way, you know what's next. It is time for the challenge pulls. Now I have actually completely redone this mug. I threw away all of the strips that were already in here and have added a bunch more. Now previously this mug contained only sequels of series that I was in the middle of or challenge prompts for reading challenges that I am participating in throughout this year or reading challenges that I have set for myself like my 23 and 23 those books would have been in here as well. I am actually making excellent progress in those challenges. In fact I have completed some challenges and in the other challenges I'm almost 90% done. So each of the challenges only really has a couple of other prompts that I need to satisfy and so this was getting very very low. So what I did is I re-put the challenge prompts back in here that I still need to satisfy. I also added it back in all of the sequels that I need to read to make progress in series. 
I also included series that I do definitely plan to start in here. So there are new series that I could be starting. I have also included all of my physical TBR and I've also included roughly around 20 strips that just say random number generator. That means that I get to select a book from my wish list using a random number generator. So there are multiple reasons why I'm doing this. First, it's going to ensure that I'm consistently making progress on series and I'm not just letting them sit on my shelves. Same thing with my physical TBR, but it also allows me the opportunity to progress with my goal of whittling down my TBR in general, including my virtual TBR. I have made significant progress with that this year, whether that's by just reading the books that were on my TBR or deciding I no longer wanted to read those books. And so I'm still working on that. And so by having the random number generator and selecting something from my wish list, I'm able to kind of still progress with that because a lot of the books on my wish list are those titles that are on my virtual TBR that I do not already own. And I'm still prioritizing backlist reads as well. So this is why I have this challenge jar. It's basically to keep me accountable. Let's just go ahead and get to this guys because I've already been talking forever and we haven't even gotten into the gameplay which is what I know y'all are here for. So let's start with goal number one. Okay and I will say that my printer was doing some funky things and like not all of these prompts were printed in full black ink. It looks like it was running out of ink but not always. I have no idea what it was doing so let's just go ahead and see. Maybe Not by Colin Hoover. Okay, so this is the book that I selected, Maybe Not. It is actually a novella that is meant to accompany Maybe Someday. So I do believe that it is best if I read Maybe Someday before I read Maybe Not. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to read both of these in the month. If I only end up getting to Maybe Someday, I will go ahead and put Maybe Not back and I will still consider the prompt as satisfied. I don't offhand know exactly what this is about. It says, at 22 years old, Sydney is enjoying a great life. She's in college, working a steady job, in love with her wonderful boyfriend, Hunter, and rooming with her best friend, Tori. But everything changes when she she discovers that Hunter is cheating on her and she's forced to decide what her next move should be. Soon, Sydney finds herself captivated by her mysterious and attractive neighbor, Ridge. She can't take her eyes off him or stop listening to the passionate way he plays his guitar every evening out on his balcony. And there's something about Sydney that Ridge can't ignore either. They soon find themselves needing each other in more ways than one. An angsty tale of friendship, betrayal, and romance. Maybe someday we'll immerse readers in Sydney's tumultuous world from the very first page. So it sounds like it's going to be another angsty, dramatic romance. It's Colleen Hoover. Y'all know that I'm here for it. All right, so that actually gave me two books. So let's go ahead and see what this next one has in store. Let's see. Will Trent. All right, so this is actually a Karen Slaughter series that I have not started yet. I was waiting until I got through the Grant County series, but I only have one book left in that series, and I don't believe that the series are truly connected, like you don't need to read Grant County before you can read Will Trent. So it looks like I'm actually starting the Will Trent series in September, and I'm very, very hyped for it. All right, draw number three. Oh, it looks like this was one where my printer was funky. Random number generator. So like I said, this is where I'm going to be using a random number generator to select a book off of my wish list. So I'm not going to choose that right now. I will choose it during the editing of this video. As soon as I know what the number is and what the number chooses, I will go ahead and post it up here on the screen for you. All right. And then the final challenge pull. Oh my gosh, I can't grab one. Why do I make these so small? Eddie Flynn. All right, so this is the next book in the Eddie Flynn series by Steve Cavanaugh. This is a bunch of legal thrillers, which I have really, really enjoyed. Hello, friends. Editing Brittany here. So I realized after filming this that the next book that I have to read in the Eddie Flynn series is not actually available in audiobook format. In fact, the audiobook for that is not expected to release until 2025. I don't know why that is, considering this book has been out for several years, I believe, at this point. And in fact, books six and seven are already out, but yet those books are only offered in like physical format as well they do not have an audiobook I don't know why the audiobooks are not being released like in a timely manner but long story short I'm not going to be able to read the next book in the Eddie Flynn series which was 50 50 so I went back to my challenge cup and I made another poll and it was to continue the Desert Plains series by Victor Methos which oddly enough is just another legal thriller so I'm totally fine with that the first book in the Desert Plains series was a killer's wife and it follows a federal prosecutor who used to be married to a man that was convicted of being a serial killer and it follows their story and in this new book that I'm going to be reading called Crimson Lake Road, it follows that same prosecutor. She is retiring, but she is going to be doing one last investigation based on a set of murders inspired by a series of grisly paintings called The Night Things. It says she's the only one who can catch the killer who's left a trail of bodies in a rural community outside of Las Vegas. But the more Jessica finds out, the less clear her case becomes. Out of options, she's forced to consult her serial killer ex-husband again to gain additional insight into the crimes and the killer's motivations. So it sounds like her serial killer ex-husband is also going to be featured in 
in these books, you know, going forward, which is totally fine. But that is going to be the book that I end up reading for this one. All right, everybody, it is time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. This time we are doing for the month of September. We are going to start with the standard number of six draws. And of course, that could increase depending on what I draw. The board should be exactly as I left it the last time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so we are off to a somewhat auspicious start because I now have to add a draw. This could potentially benefit me and get one of those blue or yellow pawns out from start depending on what color I draw, so we are going to see. All right, not so lucky, but I do have my two red pawns out on the playing field. I'm going to go ahead and flip the board and we'll see what we get. All right, so if I move that guy forward to that lands on letter and that basically is random letter generator and I have to pick a book that starts with whatever letter I choose. And then if I move this guy to that is Goodreads Choice Awards. And so that means I have to read a book that either won or was nominated for a Goodreads Choice Award. I think I'm going to go ahead and choose the random letter prompt because that would likely give me a wide variety to choose from depending on what letter it selects. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the very first draw was a number two and the color red. This landed me on the prompt of letter, which means I had to utilize a random letter generator and whatever letter was generated, I had to select a book with that letter. So what I did was I used a random letter generator and it generated the letter T. And since I now know that I'm going to be starting the Will Trent series and the very first book in that series is called Triptych, I'm actually going to double up and utilize this to satisfy both the challenge pull as well as this prompt. Just to give you an idea, this follows a detective named Will Trent. Now I have been moving very firmly away from detective fiction but I'm hoping that because this is Karen Slaughter it's going to keep me interested and invested. I do know that there is now a television show adaptation which I don't know anything about. I don't know how accurate it is to the books but if I do enjoy the books maybe I will consider watching the adaptation. It says in the city of Atlanta women are dying at the hands of a killer who signs his work with a single chilling act of mutilation leaving behind enough evidence to fuel a frenzied police hunt. This cunning madman is bringing together dozens of lives crossing the boundaries of wealth and race and the people who are chasing him must cross these boundaries too. Among them is Michael Ormawood, a veteran detective whose marriage is hanging by a thread and whose arrogance and explosive temper are threatening his career, and Angie Pulaski, a beautiful vice cop who was once Michael's lover before she became his enemy. But another player has entered the game, a loser ex-con who has stumbled upon the killer's trail in the most coincidental of ways, someone who may be the key to breaking the case wide open. All right, so this actually doesn't mention Will Trent at all, so maybe I have the wrong idea about what the book's about. I could have sworn Will Trent was a detective. I have no idea, but I'm down for the ride. It's Karen Slaughter. I'm probably going to read everything that she writes, so we're going to go with it. All right, moving on to draw number two. All right, so we drew a three and the color green. So I just need to move one of those green pawns forward three. So let me go ahead and flip the board again and we can see what we would land on. All right, so I actually don't have two pawns to choose from because if I were to move that guy over there, one, two, three, he would knock off the blue. So we're obviously not going to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and do one, two, three, and that is random emoji generator. However, even though I haven't officially changed it on the board, I have gone ahead and changed that to viewer recommendations. So I will go ahead and select a recommendation from the comment of the video where I requested your recommendations. So that is what we are going to do for this one. All right, next I drew the number three and the color green and that landed me on the prompt to read a viewer recommendation. So I went ahead and used a random comment picker for that video that I posted where I asked all of my viewers to go ahead and see my want to read list and select books that they think I definitely need to read sooner rather than later. And I did do a screenshot of me doing that so I will be sure to post it up here for you to see. But the comment that was picked was actually Undercover Bromance, which is the second book in the Bromance book club series by Lisa K. Adams. I actually just read the fifth book in that series in July for my Christmas in July reading vlog so it hasn't been that long since I read a book in the series but I'm kind of reading them out of order. If you're not familiar the Bromance book club series is literally about a group of men who have a book club where they do nothing but read romance and this is an attempt to kind of understand women better to understand what they want so that they could be better husbands, partners, and friends. I've actually really enjoyed both of the books that I've read so far. I remember going into A Very Merry Bromance and not expecting it to be as substantial as it was and it really was a lot more substantial than I was thinking it was going to be. So I ended up enjoying that a lot more than I was expecting. And I'm excited to go ahead and get into Undercover Bromance. Just based on the synopsis, it sounds like they are going to likely be reading like a romantic mystery suspense and I'm here for it. So I will be going ahead and reading this romance novel in September. All right, draw number three.
All right, so I drew a seven and the color yellow. So seven is a number where I would typically be able to split the move between two pawns if available. And in this case, there's not because I only have one active yellow pawn on the board. So we're gonna go ahead and move him forward seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, red on the cover. All right, then I drew the number seven and the color yellow. This landed me on the prompt to read a book with red on the cover. And if you remember last round and my recap from earlier in this video, reading red on the cover was actually a prompt that I drew my last round of gameplay. And I had originally selected The Violin Conspiracy by Brendan Slocum and ultimately ended up switching it out for My Dear Hamilton. So now that I've landed on the prompt again, I think I'm gonna go ahead and once again, try to get to this one. I hope that I can get it in time from my library. It's like a five week wait, but I'm hopefully it will not take very long. I'm very intrigued by the synopses of Brendan Slocum's writing because they sound like they're going to be like literary mysteries that definitely involve the classical music scene and that's not really something that I see done too terribly often. So this follows our main character Ray McMillan. It feels like his life is already mapped out because he's growing up black in rural North Carolina. It says if he's lucky he'll get a job at the hospital cafeteria. If he's extra lucky he'll earn more than minimum wage. But Ray has a gift and a dream. He's determined to become a world-class professional violinist and nothing will stand in his way. Not his mother who wants him to stop making such a racket, not the fact that he can't afford a violin suitable to his talents, not even the racism inherent in the world of classical music. When he discovers that his great-great-grandfather's beat-up old fiddle is actually a priceless Stradivarius, all his dreams suddenly seem within reach. Together, Ray and his violin take the world by storm, but on the eve of the renowned and cutthroat Tchaikovsky competition, basically the Olympics of classical music, the violin is stolen. A ransom note for $5 million left in its place. Ray will have to piece together the clues to recover his treasured Strad before it's too late. With the descendants of the man who once enslaved Ray's great-great-grandfather asserting that the instrument is rightfully theirs, and with his family staking their own claim, Ray doesn't know who he can trust or whether he will ever see his beloved violin again. So that just sounds absolutely fascinating. I'm really intrigued by the classical music component, by the mystery component, by all of the obstacles that our main character is facing in this story. So I am very excited to finally actually be getting to this, and I'm glad that it came up as an option for me this round of gameplay. Okay, draw number four. All right, we got another Jack, and so that is a skip card. So I have a horde of these still stashed away, so I'll just go ahead and add this guy to that stack. All right, and then my next draw was a Jack. That is a skip, and it's going to go and be stored with all of the other skips that I have yet to use. I am not able to retroactively use a skip, so I have to decide before I make my TBR whether I'm going to skip a prompt. So since I'm not skipping any of the prompts this round, it's not going to be used. Draw number five. All right, so that is a backward movement. So one, two, three, four would be to read a book with fall vibes, which is perfect since September does contain the first day of fall or one, two, three, four multiple timelines. Let's go ahead and do fall vibes. Next, I drew a number four, which is a backwards movement. So I had to move a green pawn backwards four and I landed on a book that features fall vibes. I think that I'm not going to select anything for this prompt right this minute. I think I'm gonna kind of allow myself to mood read this one. It is undoubtedly going to be a thriller mystery of some kind. I'm just not entirely sure which one I'm going to wanna read or which one is going to be available to me like via my library or scrib. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just let myself pick whichever thriller suspense is speaking to me at the time that I'm ready to read it. So for right now, no book is chosen, but I will eventually choose a book that is giving me fall vibes. Draw number six. Okay, green again. So with this one, I could either move forward 10 or backwards one, and I'm gonna make that decision purely based on prompt. So if I move this guy back one, that is a book box selection, which is always a handy prompt since I have so many books from book boxes that I need to read. If I move him forward 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, <laughs> that is book box as well. Okay, so either one will land me on a book box prompt. If I move this guy backwards one, that is debut, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, pet pick and we are not about to fuss with that today. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and move this guy forward 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 book box selection. All right, next I drew the number 10 and green again. I moved forward and I landed on the prompt to read a book box selection. For this, I'm going to read The Family Game by Katherine Steadman. I am choosing this one because this will actually satisfy, I believe it is a buzzword reading challenge. So it works out perfectly because it also came in a book of the month selection in October of last year. So it's been almost a year. It is definitely time for me to go ahead and get it off my shelves. I have never read anything from this author before, but I am certainly intrigued by the premise of this. It says, Harriet Reed, a 
novelist on the brink of literary stardom is newly engaged to Edward Holbach, the heir of a powerful family. And though Edward has long tried to sever ties with them, news of the couple's imminent marital bliss has the Holbecks inching back into their lives. As Harriet is drawn into their lavish world, the family seems perfectly welcoming. So when Edward's father, Robert, hands Harriet a tape of a book he's been working on, she is eager to listen. But as she presses play, it's clear that this isn't just a novel. It's a confession. A confession to a grisly crime, a murder, and suddenly the game is in motion. Feeling isolated and confused, Harriet must work out if this is part of a plan to test her loyalty or something far darker. What is it that Robert sees in her? Why give her the power to destroy everything? This might be a game for the Holbeck family, but for Harriet, losing might prove deadly. So that sounds phenomenal. We are going to see what Catherine Stedman is able to do with the story. Like I said, I've never read anything from her, so I don't know her capabilities as a thriller suspense author. It is definitely on the shorter side, so hopefully it packs more of a punch than I'm expecting, but I certainly think it's going to at least be very fast paced and engaging. So I'm excited to get to this one. All right, and then unless the board has more surprises in store for me, this will be the final draw. Green is getting a lot of action this round, which I guess is good since all of his pawns are out on the board. So one, two, three, four, five. Read a book by one of my favorite authors, which is always good. One, two, three, four, five. Summer vibes. All right, well, we are anxiously awaiting the end of summer here in Mississippi, where it has been above 94 degrees every day for the past, I would say, at least month. So we're going to go ahead and do a favorite author. One, two, three, four, five. All right, and that was it, y'all. That was the final draw. I would say the board was very, very kind to me this round, and that'll do it for this one. All right. Right. And the last draw was number five and green again. I selected green three times in a row. So green saw a lot of gameplay and this landed me on the prompt to read a book by one of my favorite authors and Colleen Hoover absolutely satisfies that. So in theory, I could read maybe someday as my favorite author. And then this as the challenge pull, we're going to see, I am still definitely going to try to read both of these in September, whether I just get to one is totally okay. I'm satisfied with that. And I will accept that as satisfying both the challenge pull and the TBR game prompt. All right, everybody that is it. Those are all the books that I plan to read in the month of September. I'm actually really excited about all of the books that I have on my TBR. I'm very much looking forward to getting to these. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books on my TBR and what your thoughts are. Or if you have made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a fall leaf emoji in honor of the start of fall, which I am desperately manifesting at this point. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I am to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I could do. And I would sure love to connect with you in one of those next videos or I would love to connect with you on any other platform. I always leave links to my Goodreads, Instagram, and IG threads down below and I would love to chat with you there. But until next time guys.